Around two years ago, I moved into my college dorm room. I had to buy a TV for the room, but being a broke college student, that was easier said than done. I decided to check Craigslist. I wasn't bothered about buying a brand new TV, I just wanted something that was in decent shape. To my surprise, I found a brand new 50 inch 4K Ultra TV, and the seller was asking for nothing. It was completely free. I knew there had to be a catch. This was too good of a deal to be true. I contacted the seller asking if it was in working condition, and they responded telling me that it worked perfectly fine. I told him that I'd take it, and he said that I'd have to come and pick it up from his house because his car had broken down. Later that night, around 11.30pm, I went to the address that he'd given me. As I was getting closer and closer, the surrounding area started to get sketchier by the minute. I was driving down an empty road surrounded by trees and forest on either side, until I eventually got to the end of the road where there was a singular house, if I can even call it that. It was more of a rundown shack in the middle of nowhere. Now, why would a man have a brand new 50 inch 4K TV in a rundown shack like this? I knock on the front door, and as I wait for him to answer, the door falls off its hinges. If that doesn't describe how neglected this place is, I don't know what will. I took a few steps in, and I wasn't surprised to see nothing but dust and cobwebs. Whoever lived here sure didn't like cleaning. I let out a nervous, hello, and a few seconds later, I heard someone respond saying, hey, I'm down here. It sounded like it came from the basement. While I'm slowly walking down the stairs, looking around into the pure darkness, I hear the same person say, Don't worry, I'm not gonna hurt you. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, the laugh did creep me out a little bit. I get to the bottom of the staircase and look around for the TV, when I see a man holding an axe, slowly walking towards me. My heart stopped as I realised exactly what was going on. This man was going to kill me. I ran as fast as I possibly could back up the stairs, with the man clearly chasing after me. A second or two after I make it up the stairs, I hear a loud crash. The wooden staircase had completely collapsed on the maniac chasing me. He must have fallen at the very top of the staircase because he didn't get back up. As I'm leaving the shack, in one of the other rooms, I noticed something. It was the TV I was looking for. Since the man was knocked out cold, I wasn't in a rush anymore, so I went over to inspect it. On top of the TV box was a note. It read, I'm in the basement chopping logs for my fireplace. If I'm not done when you get here, you can just take the TV. If you're wondering why I'm giving it away for free, it's because I'm going to die soon due to an ongoing health condition, and would have no use for the money. I hope you enjoy the TV. Damn, this guy wasn't going to use that axe to kill me. He was just using it to chop up some wood. I climbed down the remains of the staircase to offer help, but his body was gone from where I last saw it. That's when I heard, You fool, you really fell for it didn't you? Turns out, that note was just a trick to get me into the basement. I should have taken the TV and left. Thankfully, the man was severely crippled and had broken both legs. I was able to take my time climbing back up the staircase. I grabbed the TV and left. Moral of the story, be careful when you're walking up a hazardous staircase. This happened to me about two days ago. It was about 12 in the morning. I couldn't sleep, I wasn't tired either, and I was getting quite hungry. I decided to get up and walk over to the shop. I was craving a microwavable cheeseburger, but they didn't have any left, so I got the hamburger instead. When walking back home, I decided to go the long way. I didn't have anything else to do, and I thought it would be a good way to clear my mind of some personal stuff going on in my life right now. With it being around 12.30am at this point, the streets were almost completely empty. I say almost because at some point I started to hear footsteps behind me. I take a quick look back to find a figure walking in the same direction as me. He wasn't super close behind me, but as the footsteps became louder, I knew that gap was closing. Because it was dark and the figure was looking down, I couldn't make out any of his facial features. I wasn't too worried though, just because it was dark out didn't mean he was up to no good. In fact, from his point of view, he was most likely thinking the same thing about me. If for some reason he was trying to rob me, well, I'm 6 foot 5, and I've been training in mixed martial arts for 3 years. I like to think that I can handle a situation like that pretty well. Any thoughts I had about him doing something like that soon went away when he walked down a different street. The street that I would have been walking down if I didn't go the long way. I eventually make it to the alleyway. After walking down it for 20 seconds, you have to make a right turn, which leads you onto the main section of the alleyway. It would probably take you a minute to a minute and a half to walk down the main section at normal pace. As I'm walking down the main section, I notice someone standing at the very end of the alleyway. It was the same guy from earlier. Now, I'll admit, I was getting a bit freaked out at this point. It makes sense as to how he got there before me, because I took the long way back. But what didn't make sense was why he was there in the first place, just standing there. I still had about a minute of walking to do before I got to the end, so I had a bit of time to think of something. 
I had three options. I could either walk down the alleyway and pass the guy standing there. My second option would be to take a left before reaching the exit. It's the only other exit in the alleyway, and it would lead me onto a field. I'd still be able to get back to the main road, just a bit further up than the alleyway would take me. My third option was turning around and exiting the way I came in. I didn't want to make it seem like I was scared, so turning around wasn't an option. But I'd be lying if I said I felt comfortable enough to walk past him. I decided to walk across the thin bridge and onto the field instead. It's a completely desolate field, surrounded by woods and only one exit. As I walk up the hill and get my first look at the gate that I have to pass through to get out, I see that fucking guy again. Now, just like before, I wasn't creeped out about how he got there. All he'd have to do is exit the alleyway, walk further up the road, and take a left. I just couldn't understand why he was doing it, that's what scared me. Fuck walking past this creep. I thought of a simple way to outsmart him instead. I turned around and went back over the hill, the way I came. But I didn't go down the hill, I just waited behind it so he couldn't see me. Sure enough, when I peeked over the hill a few seconds later, gone. I ran as fast as I could down to the gate where he was standing just moments ago, hoping that he'd be waiting for me back at the alleyway. When I got through the gate and turned right, I realized my plan didn't work out as well as I'd hoped. He did the exact same thing as me, he just walked around the corner, waiting for me to jump the fence. He slowly walked over to me, and I warned him, saying that I'd knock the ever-living shit out of him if he got too close. And then he pulled something out of his coat. It was a microwavable cheeseburger. He said, I saw you looking for this earlier. I just picked it up a minute before you. You can have it. I accepted, apologized for being rude, and walked home. Now, this is when things get weird. I ate the cheeseburger, and shortly after, passed out. Not because I was tired, but because I was poisoned. My roommate had to call an ambulance, and I woke up the next day. I was wondering what on earth that man put into my burger, but it turns out the burger was two weeks past its expiration date. Turns out, the shop was selling food that they couldn't sell for a discounted price, even if it was expired. I filed a complaint, and the shop shut down shortly after. I was also awarded £500,000 in damages. This story took place three years ago. I'm an electrician, and one Friday evening, I was sent out to a house to fix an electrical problem one family were having. There were three people in the house when I arrived, a father and his two kids. He explained what the problem was, and said that he and one of his kids would be heading out soon. He told me that if I had any questions, I should go upstairs and ask his older son. The father was very polite, and even said I could go into the kitchen and grab something to eat if I got hungry. Shortly after, he and his son left. About 30 minutes into fixing the electrical issue, I started to get a bit hungry. I decided to go into the kitchen to make myself a sandwich. Of course, I didn't know where anything was in this house, so I had to search around the cupboards for a few minutes, opening and closing them to find what I needed. I managed to find a knife, but I couldn't find the bread. I thought I'd go upstairs and ask the man's son where the bread is. As I'm walking up the stairs, I hear a door open, followed by footsteps walking across the landing. I get to the top of the staircase to find his son already looking at me. I said to him, Your dad said I could make a sandwich while he was gone. I was just wondering whether... That was it. That was all I had time to say before he pulled a gun out and shot me. He went on to say, You really thought you could trick me with the old sandwich excuse? That's the oldest trick in the book. I had no idea what this psycho was talking about. I just wanted to know where the bread was. I managed to slide down the stairs and out the door, where I was spotted by someone passing by. The police were called and went to investigate. They came out with the man's son, but it wasn't the person that shot me. It turns out the person who shot me was living in the family's attic for years without them knowing, coming downstairs when nobody was in to eat their food. When searching the attic, they also found a loaf of bread. He probably came down to steal it the night before. If only he chose to steal something else, then maybe this would have never happened. Oh, and if you're wondering why the real son didn't hear the gunshot, it's because he was gaming. He had a headset on, and so he couldn't hear anything going on in the background. 